Good evening, everyone, and welcome to the January 14th of our selectmen meeting at 6.30. Can everyone please uh, stand for the Pledge of Allegiance? I pledge, pledge allegiance, allegiance to, to the flag of the United States, States of America and, and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. Public announcements. Jim, you got one? Oh boy. <laughs> Historian Dr. Gary Highlander discusses Ted Roosevelt's America on January 17th. The Abingdon Public Library is pleased to welcome back Historian Gary Highlander on Thursday, January 17th at 7 p.m. Dr. Highlander will share his knowledge and insights about the presidency of Theodore Roosevelt. Teddy had a larger than life personality and became president after the assassination of William McKinley in 1901. He was elected to a second term and served as president until 1909. Some of his greatest achievements as presidents were in the areas of conservation, including establishing national forests and foreign policy, creating a new role for the United States on the world stage. Registration is not necessary for this program. Up to 75 people will be accommodated on first-to-arrive basis. Dr. Highlander's lecture is funded by the state aid to public libraries. Also, on January 24th at 7 p.m., Will Broussard, outreach coordinator for the Mount Washington Observatory, will share tales from the home of the world's worst weather at the Abington Public Library. And that would be January 24th at 7 p.m. On Friday night, January 25th, St. Bridget's PTO will be holding an LCR left center right tournament at the Abington Knights of Columbus. It's a fun night out and a chance to win some cash. Teams of 10 will play, uh, play two rounds. The winner from each round will advance to the final to play for the grand prize. It's $20 per person or $200 for a table of 10. No experience needed. It's a very easy dice game anyone can play. Bring your own snacks. Cash bar will be available. You do not need a full table to register, but registration forms will be sent home from school and sent um, or, or send a message to uh, and pay via Vimo, Vimo, Venmo, whatever that is, at uh, SBS PTO. Thank you. Thank you, Ken. Ken? I have nothing tonight. You're up. I am. Uh, annual town election, April 27, 2019. Nomination papers for the 2019 annual town elections are now available in the office of the town clerk. Incumbents who have three-year terms which expire with the annual town elections are Board of Selectmen Robert Manning, Jr., Board of Assessors Ann T. Welch, Board of Health Teresa D. Mays, Alexander S. Hegarty, Sewer Commissioner Michael P. Dunneman, Sr., John E. Warner II, School Committee, Janet L. Cummings Leary, Trustees of Public Library, Carolyn Gorman Murray, Gerard F. Hass, Laura J. Nuttall, Water Commissioner Michael Egan. Incumbents who have five year terms which expire with the annual town election are Planning Board Richard J. Collins II. All interested parties should take out nomination papers as soon as possible. Nomination papers must be returned to the Board of Registrars by 5 p.m on Monday, March 11, 2019. Any incumbent who does not plan to be a candidate in this year's election is requested to notify the town clerk in writing as soon as possible. Town clerk's office will be open for voter registration until 8 p.m. on Friday, April 5, 2019, which will be the last day to register for the April 27th annual town election. Any questions about running for office in the town election or voter registration may call Leanne Adams at 781-982-2112. Thank you very much. Um, just a reminder that the Abington St. Patrick's Day Parade will be held this year on Sunday, March 17th. Can you believe it? 40 years. It will begin at 1 o'clock from St. Patrick's Square and continue north to North Abington Center. In relation to that, where the parade group is holding a meat raffle on February 14, 2019 at the Polish Club on Whale Street in Abington starting at 2 p.m. to raise funds to help pay for the parade. Please attend and support this very good cause. Um, 
just a list of current vacancies of the town boards and committees we have a one vacancy on the Commission for Disabilities we have three vacancies on the SAGE committee we have three vacancies on the uh, Abington Housing Partnership Committee I urge anyone in the public who's interested in applying for any of these committees to uh, either go online or approach the town manager's office to get applications to apply thank you very much mr. chairman yes mr. Chairman. Oh, regard, these are positions that really um, don't get the spotlight much and to be honest with you I'm not even positive what the housing partnership committee does um, so possibly could we have a description maybe on uh, if these gonna be listed maybe we get a description of what they do obviously the SAGE committee is you know in the public eye but the uh, Commission on Disabilities these are a couple of committees that kind of fall by the wayside unless there's something pressing but if maybe we can have a description of what they're about let people know there might be someone that will see the description and say this is right up my alley so sure that not that possible Dory? oh sure okay so Dory will post something on the website yep. with a description of each of the three positions that have vacancies very good mr. Cole thank you very much um, I'd like to move on to public comment I'd like to remind everyone in the audience that public comment is to address any issues that are currently on our agenda um, please keep your comments brief please if you have any comments come up and give us your name and address does anyone have public comments tonight mr. chairman before we uh, allow the public to comment I'd like to I'd like to make a motion that the board instruct the chair to include on the next agenda a motion to rescind the board's original motion from October 29, 2018 to reappoint the town manager to a subsequent three-year term effective July 1, 2019 and to proceed with negotiations to update an existing contract. I'll second the motion. Um, any discussion? Is there a, any reason why the board wishes to do that I just his motion is to put it on the agenda I tried to talk to you uh, last week about this and uh, you turned me down so this is the only recourse I could take to get it on the agenda um, is the board on, is the board in the board members understanding of, of the request and what we're asking the board to do are there any questions being held by the board about this request not the request but mr. chairman I like, I'd like to make two comments myself and it's about the role of the chairman uh, and the selectmen the powers of the chair are to prepare the agenda um, a good chair will make efforts to ensure that the other selectmen are given an adequate chance to be heard um, that's in our handbook on selectmen the other one generally a chair will honor the request of any board members to have an item included on the agenda if such a request is denied however the member can call for a vote of the board to instruct the chair to include the item on the agenda of the next meeting one of the toughest things to be on this board is probably the chairman um, and it's not an easy task but I think if any selectmen uh, now or past or present if, if they want an item on an agenda right I think the obligation is is to put it on so um, is there any other comments from the board can I just ask a question is this going to be um, in regular session or executive session my, my concern is that if something comes up about someone's character we shouldn't be talking about it in open session that's my only concern I mean if there's allegations or I don't even know you know what's going on here well, the first I've heard of it the original motion he wants to talk about was in open session so I don't see why it would, this would need to be an executive anything else so there's a motion on the table and, and Jim could you just read your motion one more time please I would like to make a motion that the board instruct the chair to include on the next agenda a motion to rescind the board's original motion from October 29, 2018 to reappoint the town manager to a subsequent three-year term effective July 1, 2019 and to proceed with negotiations to update existing contract. Uh, I have a motion and second and the public comment has been done. Is there anything else to say on this? Uh, to what was the last part to update existing contract that's the original motion I'm just verbatim well um, 
I am not uh, opposed to putting this back on the agenda. Uh, if the board members are that strongly urging that they'd like to have this conversation, then I'm going to ask for a vote to agree with Jim Conley's request and ask for a vote of yay or nay. When, when's our next meeting? When are we scheduled for our next meeting? The next one was February 11th. February 11th. Uh, is that going to interfere with the time restraint? What time restraint? You know, why don't we have one in Jan the end of January? Well, that's not his motion. His motion is to have it at the next meeting. That's so we have a special meeting. The next agenda. I'm just asking why there's not a meeting at the end of January. <laughs> we usually do two a month. We haven't met twice a month in a long time. Yeah, it's been, yeah, we don't have anything for the agenda, so. Most agendas are based on whether we have issues month. enough yeah. to, to hold the meeting. So mm -hmm. there hasn't been more than one meeting held for a bunch of bunch of months. So we only have generally have one meeting so far lately. But um, you may want to adjourn your meet. You may want to change your. Yeah, that's what, uh, that's you the point I'm trying to. Another motion that we. We'll just amend it. We, all right. I'd like to make a motion. Mm -hmm. Let me amend this. I would like to make a motion that the board instruct the chair to include on the next agenda what date would be fine for everybody. Next Monday? Is that too that's, soon? Mon that's a holiday. Uh, Monday's a holiday, isn't it? It is. It is. So we could do it Tuesday or the Monday after that. 28th? 28th is fine with me. 28th is fine with me. Tom? Yep, fine. 28th. Yep. I guess the amended motion would be, I'd like to make a motion that the board instruct the chair to include on the next agenda dated January 28, 2019, a motion to rescind the board's original motion from October 29, 2018 to reappoint the town manager to a subsequent three-year term effective July 1st, 2019, and to proceed with negotiations to update the existing contract. So we're at all in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Opposed. 3-2, it's put on the agenda. January 28th. January 28th. January 28th. And the, the chairman will have leniency to, if that's just going to be the only agenda right now, or do you want to make it like a regular we meeting? Can, we can add whatever, more to it. If there's more stuff. Yeah, you might as well. Something comes up, Is yeah. that agreeable to the board? Yeah, whatever agreeable. needs to be taken care of, we can do. Okay. okay. So the meeting when, when was the February meeting? February 11th. Any other point of comment in the public? Yeah. If not, we have um, some appointments. And before we have our public announcements, our public appointments, um, there was a card received from the water department uh, which discussed the quality of our water. Um, I thought it was important that we get an update from the water superintendent. Tonight we have Dan Callahan from the water department to give us a, a uh, layman's description of what's going on with our water. And, how it's affecting us and where it's being affected. Welcome to our meeting. Good evening. Thank you. Uh, my name is Dan Callahan, the water superintendent of the town of Abington, the town of Lockland, the Abington Lockland Water Works. You get all the gray here. Um, in a nutshell, the water is perfectly safe. We, it's because the guys are out there doing their job, testing the water regularly, that we find inadequacies. We did the last quarter we test quarterly for <laughs> trihalomethanes, which are basically byproducts of chlorine uh, mixing with organics. As you know, we all use chlorine. It's how you disinfect the water to make it safe to drink. Um, the acceptable limit is 80 milligrams per liter. We had 85. Uh, and there was a note on the website that states equivocally there was nothing wrong with the water, it's perfectly safe. Um, being exposed to trihalomethanes can cause cancer. And this is the best part in the long run. It can cause cancer if you're exposed to it for 70 years. We found it one water up until we did that testing, and we test quarterly. Uh, up until 2014, we used to take 15 samples every quarter, 
and then the EPA decided that it was more um, effective to take your worst four sites and test them quarterly instead of testing all 15. The other part of this is, unfortunately, when we get a hit like this, and we are very proactive on it, we have hired a uh, consultant to review our operations and find out, we know what the problem is. Um, where this hit was, was over in Rockland, near the Norwell town line, Longwater Drive. There was nothing on 800 Brockton Ave. There was nothing at Colony Nursing. There was nothing at 899 Hingham Street, which is the other three sites. This one site had it. The unfortunate part is it is a 10 inch main that runs up to a dead end with only two services on it. And so the water gets stagnant and that's what really caused the problem. Uh, what we are looking at doing now with the engineers review and everything is to have uh, what we call it a, uh, a blow off or a bleeder. So you're constantly running water up in that area. And you're dumping it to waste. But you have to move that water to stay on top of things of this nature. Again, I uh, applaud the staff that they're the ones out there doing the job every day. It was their efforts that found this before it became a major problem. Um, the sad part is it was one location on Longwater Drive in Rockland, right down the street from there at 1099 Hingham Street, did not have a problem. But once it shows up in your system, we are required to notify everybody, all 12,000 customers. It really has nothing to do with Abington, but you're our customers. You're all drinking the same water. As I said, the water over here was perfectly safe. And, and, and even with the uh, THMs, it's perfectly safe. Um, I feel very confident in, in our approach. Um, you do take samples quarterly. And you can project if you think you're going to have a problem. Well, our second round, I'm sorry, our third round in November, uh, would have been September. Uh, but in 2018 projected that we might have a problem in the fourth round. So we were proactive. We took our entire plant down. We drained it. We brought in contractors. We cleaned all the clear wells. We were very proactive on it. Fired the plant back up and the problem was still there. Which at that point we realized that it's, it's going to be the distribution system, the dead end out there. So that's where we stand on that. Um, it's not a false alarm. But it's a false panic because, uh, as again, like I say, we have to notify 12,000 customers that we had one hit over the other side of town. We did have the similar type thing here in um, Abington about two, three years ago, and that was coming from Myers Ave. And that's because the pre chlorination was mixing with the organics, creating the uh, disinfectant byproducts. What we did then is we revamped our whole design of the main at the treatment plant so that we were able to get our contact time for our chlorine, but do away with the pre-chlorination. The pre-chlorination was mixing with the organics causing the problem. It went away. So um, we, we have a pretty good system, an old system, but a pretty good system. And it's run uh, well by the uh, staff with the treatment plant and the distribution guys. So. That's where I stand on it. Any questions from the board? No, I have a question, but it's not relative to this. But it's, um, is there a better way of letting people know when you're going to be flushing in their neighborhoods? I know we try our best. You know, there's signs around town. It's on Facebook. Um, is there any better? Is, is it possible to use like a reverse 911 to the residents in those? They we've, we've tried that. The police department will not let us because uh, it's not an emergency. Right. But we have a flushing line that's advertised on all the websites. And when we're flushing, you call that line every day. And it tells, every day we change the message of the area we are in. So that, you know, um, that's the best way we can get the message out. That is just dial the phone and, and find out where we are. And we also use that if we have a break <coughs> in an area that's going to cause uh, unacceptable water. So uh, we'll post that on our Facebook and our website if, if it's not already. 
It's probably on the town. It is on the website, on the water department on website. We put it on our Board of Selectmen website, Tori. Mm -hmm. Sure. You, do you know the number of? I, I don't, to tell you the truth. Um, again, though, we flush twice a year, the spring and the fall. Uh, we will be getting ready to flush probably, we usually start around uh, late March, early April uh, to get our spring flushing out there. And, th and the thing is that it, the reason we flush is to move this water along and keep it uh, safe to drink. A um, couple of questions. The age of our water lines for the town of <coughs> Avenue and Rockland, are, are, for the majority of the lines, are they greater than 50, less than 50 years old? Uh, greater than 50. Greater than 50. Yeah. Um, do we have any other deadheads like this deadhead street where there's only two feeds off the 10 inch main? We do have dead ends and it's pretty common, uh, but nothing with only two feeds off of it. I mean, you have a 10 inch main that's pulling, uh, what is it, Joe? 3,000 feet, I believe. And, uh, you know, you, you got 3,000 feet of 10 inch main water sitting there that just two services are coming off of. So is there anything, I'm just asking a question because I don't know, is there anything like a recyclatory pump that could be utilized to move the water inside the line so you don't have to drain it off and put it to waste? No. No, you just no. can't, you're constantly recycling the water. Sort of like the hot and cold system you put under your sink to get the water to constantly circulate so you always have hot water on demand under your sink. I don't know if there was a way to get water in a, at a dead end spot just to circulate around. Yeah, but so the problem like, is if it gets, you got 3,000 feet of 10 inch main, <laughs> you're down at the dead end, it, it, it could be done. I don't know if there was a, Run I, another I 3, know if there was a feet back. And open and close and pull and push, that's all I was asking. Yeah, about. not I mean, really. Instead of having to push the waste, but yeah. you gotta do what you have to do. Now, this is inside, is, this is not caused by the pipe itself though, right? This is a reaction of stagnant water sitting, correct? That that's- Pretty much, and it, is, it, it, it could be the pipe too, like the age of the pipe, but, okay. uh, it's mixing with organics. Organics get in the pipe. They sit in the pipe even sometimes when they get in there. But it, the the longer it sits, the more apt you are to have a reaction. Okay. Um, so I assume we're going to be keeping a taut line <coughs> on this section of the pipe for a little while just to make sure we're keeping that. Yes, we are. Every time you take a hit, do you have to make a public announcement? Yes. We do it every quarter. Okay. Now, we'll be coming up in February having to do this quarter. If it's a hit again, we have to notify all 12,000 people. Okay. So this, um, this, I just want to remind the public that it's a possibility that as, for as long as this potentially could be a hit on our system, they are required by law to generate this identification to all members who use Abington Water, Rockland Water. Correct. And so you may be receiving more than one card. It's not a repeat, it's not a, it's not an accident. We're saying every time we, this happens, it's because there was a positive hit greater than 0.80 0.80 of uh, trial for, for dry So um, it's just important that the public understand that the water department is under regulation to supply this notification every time they do the test. And if it meets the standards of the test, you have to generate the meal out to the all users of the water system. And, and, and I agree. And the sad part is we use the EPA's wording. And their wording is there is nothing wrong with the water. This is not an emergency. You don't have to do anything. But we're but, telling you. But, yeah. <laughs> It's the butt that gets you every yeah. time. So yeah. Is there anything else from the board? No, but you, you have some members of your board here tonight, or at least one you want, you want to introduce. Yep, uh, I'd like to introduce uh, the chairman of the Abington board, Richard Muncie. Thank you for coming out. And the assistant superintendent is here with us tonight, too, Joe Lapointe. Thank you very much. You. Appreciate you both being here and you being here. Right. Thank you for making. Thank you. Um, yeah. Thanks, we Dan. have a uh, public appointment. I'm going to open up a public hearing. The board of selectmen will hold a public hearing on May. Monday, January 14th, 2019 at 6.45 p.m. We're a little late on that. Uh, in the Carter Room at 500 Glenwitz Way on the application of Joa and Jardin Terra Nossa Center Market, Inc., 1501 <coughs> Bedford Street for the off-premises 15 Packard Wine and Malt Beverage License. I think we know them. <laughs> yes, we do. <laughs> Good evening, Good evening. Good evening. Um, welcome, and let us know what's going on. Okay, thank you. My name is Ron Whitney. I have the pleasure of representing John Jardim here this evening. Uh, as you say, John Jardim is a familiar man here in the town of Abington. He owns Giordano's restaurant right across the street here on Bedford Street. Has opened that up recently with his brother Edvar and his sister Ian. Uh, prior to opening that restaurant, he was in business here in Abington for 14 years running the Terra Nossa Center Market, which is down at, uh, I call it the Farmer's Market Plaza, 
down by the uh, Weymouth uh, town line. And uh, so he's run that successfully for 14 years. Um, if I'm a little hoarse, it's because I was at the Patriots game yesterday. <laughs> no excuses. No excuses. <laughs> <laughs> no bragging either. Please bear with me. Please bear with me. 50 yard lines uh, each, you know. Yeah. <clears throat> Uh, so he's run the uh, market successfully for 14 years. He employs 15 people. He did just become aware recently that there was a package uh, beer and wine license available. And so he asked that, uh, for my assistance applying for it. And that's the application that you have before you. Uh, the market operates from 6.30 a.m. until 9 p.m. Uh, Monday through Friday and on Saturday and Sunday he opens at 8 a.m. and closes at 9 p.m. John is his hard working guy here as you'll find. He's in the restaurant and at the market and as I say he's assisted by his sister Ian and his brother Edva. They all live in the area. John yeah. lives in uh, Whitman and Ian is in Norton. Norton. And Norton. Michael lives in Norton. And Ed Bowers in Rockland. Uh, so they're all local people, and he'd be happy to answer any questions that the board has. Does the board have any questions? Yeah. I assume um, all the particulars of the NAS story, that we have all the re respect responses from all public safety and everything. Yes, everything no is issues. in order. Um, taxes are in order. Yes. Um, is there any <coughs> question? I don't know the answer to this. The fact that he has a liquor license at the restaurant and he has now have a, a second liquor license, is there a maximum number of license that can be owned by any particular party? I believe the state or I believe it's three. Is that the three? Three. I just want to make sure we're yeah. an overbearing yeah. It's, it's three, right? Yes. I think it is three, but I just want to make sure we were okay with that. Um, again, are there any questions from the board? Now, there's a little restaurant in there too, correct? Yes. But this would be to, just to sell. No, I don't want to serve. You just, just, like yeah, just just strictly a package license. Package, yeah. 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 I, I guess my question to you is the hours. They're regulated by the town, aren't they? They can't be, I mean, this, if the store opens at 6.30, but they can't serve, they can't sell alcohol at 6.30. Exactly. They? No, they wouldn't be able to sell alcohol yeah, well, at 6.30. Is it 8 whatever the regulations is, we're going to follow. Okay. Yeah, by the state, whatever the regulation is to sell alcohol retail. Yeah. I think it's 8 o'clock on Sundays, 10. Yes, I think so. I want to make sure that it would be those hours. And the weekdays is what? 8. Is it eight? Pretty sure it's eight. I'm not far but I'm pretty sure it's eight. And Sunday ten. We can check that though. Is this our last um, package store license? No, actually there's where the town is allowed seven. This license would make six, so there would still be one available. Okay. And this is a retail wine and malt license, like a Trukies, that type. Are there any other questions? If not, I'll accept the motion to accept the uh, malt and beer weiss license for Terranosa Center Market at 1501 Bedford Street, Edmonton, Mass. I just have one more, one more question. Go right ahead, Mr. Coyle. Um, tips training, some employees are required to be tips trained, correct? Yes. I think there has to be somebody there at all times that's tips trained. Or yes. I'm not positive about that, but. Yes, there should be and somebody he's there. prepared to comply with that, Mr. Coyle. Yes. Yep. Yeah. All right. Any other questions? All right. Do I have a motion to accept? I'll make a motion to accept. Uh, Mr. Conley makes a motion. Do I have a second? I'll second. Tim seconds. Is there any further comment? It is a public hearing. Oh, yes, sir. My name is Azul Jabri. Microphone. Would you come up to the microphone, yes. please? Thank you. Name and your address, please. My name is Nazmul Chowdhury. I own a small business on the Route 18. My store name is Weymouth Food Mart. Its address is 1690 Main Street, the last building of the Weymouth. And the Terranosa, I guess, the first building of Abington on the Route 18. Okay. All right, my store is a convenient store. It's not a supermarket, but I have same thing, beer, wine, malt beverages, license and from my business is Terranosa is few year maybe just the uh, FedEx street whatever the street okay that's it now my question is there is another malt beverage business on the other side on the CVS cross street from CVS it's called family center gas station 
they have a milk beverage. On the Route 18, same way, if you come this way, Abington, there is a Truckee, they have a beer, wine, malt beverage. Mm -hmm. There's already three malt beverages on the street within one mile. Now, I'm the middle, and the Theranos I take next to me. And uh, I'm so sorry, I don't, uh, my attorney is not with me because uh, he's a little engaged tonight. That's why I cannot bring him with me. Mm -hmm. But he's going to contract with your town, and if uh, he need to contact with ABCC, we're going to contract, but I have this, uh, how we're going to survive. So you're, con you're asking the board to take into consideration a concern of the fact that there's the business of Weymouth, the, the two businesses in Weymouth and the two businesses at Abington are too close together? Yes. Okay. And from me, it's like, I say, few years, not from here to not even library. Okay. That, that close. You are located at where? Um, the uh, Rockland, Rockland Federal, 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 yes. Federal Credit Union? Yes. And then there's a? FedEx Drive. No, there's a Fed, but then there's, there's a road. And then is yeah, the FedEx truck. Where, yeah, and their building. Yes, the Terranosa building. Yes. Now, in, in the heading towards Wayne, going down Weymouth on the right hand side, in that strip mall, there's a there's a package store there too. Correct. Yes. Yes. Did they open up before or after you? Which one you say? In that strip mall where the um, Thai restaurant is and the, the laundromat is. No, they do not have any. There's no mall beverages. No. I think there is. No. They do not. They do not have any restaurant. They do not have there's a, a restaurant. They, there's, there's a Thai food restaurant. No, uh, yeah, they have a, you know, uh, on premises, not off premises, like like us, malt beverages, sell as a retailer, not off premises. The they Chinese have, restaurant, the same Even in premises right. have their same complex. No. The, the, what is called Moto Garden. Right. Mm -hmm. There is a, they have a in premises too. Mm -hmm. Okay. Well, we're, we're elected to represent the people of Abington, and get well, the tax uh, No, and I agree, and, and, and believe me, I, I use that the package store that you're talking about. I use I use that, um, you know, but also I, I can't. No, 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 no. <laughs> not a lot. But it, but I I feel the same way. I can't. It's too I close. Under, I understand about, but and I understand what you're saying about it's too close. But it sometimes when I look at it, it's sometimes I can't, and and it, it's. And it was even before the construction on Route 18. Um, you know, unfortunately, sometimes getting into where you are yes. is difficult, traffic-wise or something like that. Yeah, so he's going to he's going to have the same problem. But the, you it, know, construction uh, is construction. It's killing us anyway. No matter what, next three, yeah. four years. No, we are almost surviving kind of situation. You know, they are supermarket, and but I also think that you'll find that. Uh, this gentleman runs a supermarket. It's been there forever, and this is just another convenience for their customers. The, the ability to, bu to buy alcohol there. It's not. I don't think they're going to get a lot, an awful lot of people just going in there to buy the alcohol. They're going to frequent the restaurant that's there, and they're going to. Yeah, but the, the way food, food mart is for almost nine years. Mm -hmm. They're selling alcohol too. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I don't. I don't think it's our place on a board to regulate. Competition. No, I mean, no, I'm not. I'm not. not I'm I mean, not asking for there's competition. There's a Burger King next to every McDonald's, and it just they both survive, and it makes them better. That's what competition does. So I say good luck to you, and if he slices passes tonight, good luck to him. Is there anything else? I'm no. giving you opportunity. Well, well, no, I, I, Tim, and I, I heard what he said. You said you're not asking about competition. So, what are you asking? I mean, what, asking ABC, for is ABC. Is I'm, I'm sorry, ABC is going to. I'm assuming is going to prove this. So, Again. no, my thing is is too close. It's not town fight. It's not competition. It's not quality. Mm. My question is too close. These two alcohol retailers. That is my question. Yeah. But, but I agree with Tim, you know, and I hate to say that, but if you have a Burger King and a McDonald's, they're, they're, they're too close and they do the same product. Um, you know, unfortunately, it, it's, I guess it's the nature of the business. And to be honest with you, there's still one more license left, and if someone was to say, I want to open up one across the street from the Brazilian supermarket, I'd be okay with that too. There used to be one there years ago, but um, it's just the way it is. I'm sorry. Okay, thank you very much. You're welcome.
Is there any other public comment on this? Ms. Sorry, you're right. Thank you very much, Kenny, for bringing that up. Because the public is welcome to make a comment. If there's anybody as a butters or anyone who wants to make a comment on this, feel free to step to the phone. Um, well, I make a motion to close the public hearing. Yeah. Um, then I can have a motion to close the public hearing. Uh, I think we have to down the board to, to close the public hearing. Is it a voice vote or an individual vote? Critical. I apologize. No, just like a regular vote. Vote to close the public hearing. Do I have a first and um, second on that? I'll second. Uh, Tom seconds that. Anything further to be said? All in favor say aye to close the public hearing. Aye. 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 Opposed? It's five, unanimous, 5-0. Five, uh, do we vote to approve the term? I think we already had a motion. We have a motion to approve and second, 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 correct? Yeah. Um, is there anything further to say on that? If not, can I have a motion to approve the license? All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? No. It's 5-0. Congratulations. Thank, Thank you very you. much. Thank you. Um, next on our agenda is a continuance of our public hearing from last month uh, regarding um, Yaz at uh, 1209 Bedford Street. Come on up. Glad you gave me that. She's back. No kidding. <laughs> So, when we last spoke, we had some concerns about the design of the outside uh, area, and you were going to try to address that in the time frame that we had between that last meeting and this meeting. Yes. Have you been able to do that? Yes, I am. Okay. So, would you like to talk about that? Absolutely. I actually um, put together a little Thank you. packet of the draw-out. And um, what was in question is the barrier for my, the separation of cream, the ice cream shop, and my side for Yaz's table. So if you notice, the last page is a um, picture of a fence. And that is actually exactly the same material that is currently on the property that divides the both patios to the street. So on the first page, it'll say existing fence at the very top, and that is um, the exact same that you see on page three. So I'm just in the correlance of that, where the two lines separate, I'll have the ex a fence that will be going down both ends, and then also with a gate that will swing, and um, that will close the walkway in front of the glass um, where the restaurant is when you first go into it. That will allow from people not able, once they have sitting on the patio, they'll be able to um, be enclosed so no one can just sneak on the patio without uh, being noticed, they'd have to actually open the, physically open the gates. So there would be a <laughs> protection on that side. And that would be closed after hours. <coughs> I think that was what was in question as far as the, for the alcohol being served on the patio. Does the board have any questions? Did you, I expressed concerns last time you were here about the hours of, um, the entertainment did you address that in your application for entertainment license I my concern was just 11 p.m. during the week I felt was too late to have live music outside okay um, and I think we had spoken about what was it 10 in correlates to what I was thinking um, more around 9 but 9 o'clock and is that in the same for the establishment next to me with them that, um, that's the what we were gonna look at yeah okay. we were gonna look at what time I I believe this was just weekends till 8 o'clock but um, okay. I'm not sure if we found that to be. Do we have that information? <laughs> the, the, the permit the for the um, step yeah. the ale house. The ale house. They had the uh, weekend entertainment on the on the. I believe it's eight o'clock on the weekend. On the weekends, I will double check that though. On the weekdays is the same or nothing during the week. Nothing on the week. Nothing yeah. during the week there, right? No. Weekends. Inside. Well, so that's not inside, that right? So would 9 p.m. across the board be appropriate? I'm just trying to figure out. I don't plan on having outside entertainment all the time, but on the occasion that I do, whether it's a Tuesday or a Saturday, I just want to be able to be able to plan certain things like that moving forward, as well as with private events that we'll be holding on the property. Right. And I think till 9 is a reasonable hour during the week, but, I mean, there are neighbors and they do work. And of course. Of course. I think we should handle this twofold. One is permission to have the outside seating and then the entertainment as a second part are there any other questions from the board um, 
Yeah. Well, I'm trying to go through it, but I'm just. How's it? Where's all the parking for all? Um, do I have it on a schematic? I think we have a see one, do we? Uh, I'm just worried again about, and I saw that there's a new telephone pole. It has to do with that construction, I guess, on Route 18, but. Um, How's it, the parking? How do you how do you think the parking in the entrance is going to be getting into the entrance and the parking? I mean, are, are you apparently you have enough spaces for for the business. Well, it is a twelve oh nine is a shared lot, um, so I don't have a specific just for the breakfast restaurant or the ice cream shop. We all have a shared lot, so our guests can still park at Sullivan Tire if they needed to. To find parking is what the current situation is, anyways. To, to run the breakfast place um, so that haven't uh, hasn't really been a concern or in question as far as space because there's uh, plenty of space any other questions on the board is there any other pump is there a public concern yes please Hi, Bob. Um, Ann Welch, 81 Highland Road. I still have a, a number of questions. Um, I, I question the barrier. I, I thought that when we first discussed, or when the barrier was first discussed, it was more than just a gate preventing people from going to the ice cream shop. I mean, you put up a fence. Anyone who's sitting there eating ice cream is going to take advantage of the music. So the fact that they're only separated by a little gate, to me, doesn't really sound. I think the fence, was, our concern on the fence was more for the alcohol, uh, not not so much the music. Uh, no fence is going to keep the music in, obviously. Right, yeah. right. But as far as the alcohol, I, th I think that's why we wanted the fence around. Okay. Um, and does she need approval from the property owner to do this? She does not own this property. Um, she probably doesn't own the op property, but I'm assuming that she's, uh, well, I, I'll have her answered. I'm assuming that she. Talk to the property owner, but <laughs> I guess she could answer that better than I could. Okay. And then the other question was, did she ever seek approval from the Board of Health to have that outside patio? She, you, you can't just serve out on a patio without approval from the Board of Health. There's a whole application process. There was something from Marty here. Yeah, no, um, our Board of Health agent had no, no concern with it. But she's got to, there's an application process. So she has to submit an application and go before the Board of Health. You'd have to speak to the Board of Health. On right. That well, I'm just I, saying I'm that sure. I want you to take these things into consideration when you're making your decision that that doesn't end with just that. That there's more to this approval request. For her to be able to serve out this, she'd have to be in compliance with all our boards. So, right. I mean, whether we vote her tonight, right. if she's not in compliance with the Board of Health, she's not going to operate anyway. So. Okay. And then my other major concern is what happens when they widen the road and she loses all that space? She's going to lose a big chunk of space. I'm told that the alehouse is considering changing their opening to the side of the building because they're going to lose all that frontage. Now, is it not dangerous to put up a wall and have people sitting right on the other side of it? I mean, that's scary to me. That she, And the last item I have, and I'm not sure. I don't, you know, I'm not an expert on this, but, and I don't know who to show it to. This, I went out into the assessor's database, and the renderings don't even show a patio. There's no patio here. So somebody threw down some hard top and called it a patio. So I don't even know if she has a legal patio to do any of this on. And I don't fault her because I'm sure when she moved into the, the premise, there were tables and chairs out there. Well, there's a patio in front of the ice cream pit. That's not listed. I do have answers to those concerns, if I may. Yes, you may. Yeah. Um, 
first I did reach I did uh, speak to Marty in concerns of because when I moved in I actually took over cream etc which was existing um, business it was a turnkey operation which I bought over in January 1st of uh, 2018 and it wasn't until March 8th when I turned it into Yaz's table then having to reapply for everything making sure everything was in coincide for the establishment uh, with that being said uh, when Marty had come down to approve for the to do his first initial expect, um, inspection he also inspected outside for the patio seeing that the premises had a patio and that was part of the um, whether it was 50 people or if it was 75 people regardless of the count of guests that we were approved for patio was part of the premises the only thing that came into con into question was the application for the liquor license which was not existent when I took over cream etc that's where there was a lack of verbiage in that application saying that there was a patio whether it, if I had said that in the beginning just for the application to the ABCC this wouldn't be in question it would just be a matter of is it 50 people or 75 guests to be able to serve that so that's why everything had to come into reapplication on that sense which had come to light the night that I did have an event outside um, but with that being said for the Board of Health is concerned I am covered and approved to be able to serve um, food outside and we're do just you have, do you have a copy of that application approved by them I can certainly get that okay. absolutely um, the other part uh, for the the drawing that I had given you as well for the uh, concern for the um, double lane on Route 18, you'll see where I have here, it says new telephone pole, right in front of the existing fence. From the t telephone pole to the street currently is at 20 feet. So for the town to be able to create a double lane, they would be taking 12 feet of that going towards uh, the fence, which then still uh, leaves eight feet before the telephone pole that had come in from the telephone pole to the actual patio is another 10 feet so we're talking about even after everything is said and done there's still 18 feet variance from the street the new street that will be developed to my patio so the current fence that is in place will not be moving um, which I ended up luck being luck lucked out on that situation due to the fact that they are doubling the size of the um, of the street but there is no concern of any part of that being reconstructed in fact on page two you'll see a Google map of the property where the fence is where the green um, the green patch is as well and the patio plate spot is actually quite small a lot smaller than uh, you would expect for it being in the distance it is 20 actually exactly 30 feet from the street currently at the moment because that was part of my concern as well for my own patrons and no, their safety I, of course and I would still and that actually was that hard rendering because you know where they're going to take it is all that all that green grass and you, once you lose that you've just got that little white picket fence just to show you just so you're aware as well because I understand your concern being that um, so this is where the new telephone pole is this is the existing fence so the pole is here right now right. they wouldn't go behind to take up any no, of no, this no. space. No, 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 but what I'm, is this the street? No, this is my building, this is my patio, this is the greenery around my patio, and then this is the fence, and then about 20 feet head will be this, is the street. No, that so that's my understanding. But again, you can see well, from the In other the words, Google they're, not they're not taking out your fence. They're not taking out my fence. No, no they're, they're not going they into taking my. The fence, but I thought that they were going to take all the land up to the fence. But they already put in a telephone pole, why would they? Exactly. I didn't know they put in a telephone yeah. pole. Yeah, I didn't either. They did a couple, yeah, yeah. Of, I didn't couple of weeks But ago. we still have the issue with that Board of Assessors that it doesn't even reflect that there is a patio there. Well, that I think that's more of a Board of Assessors issue than, than it has to do with her, her right. applying for this license. That's, that's what I believe. And there was one other question. You talked to the owner of the building. I, yes, he's I, well I aware. I know there's a copy of lease in here, but I'm not. Absolutely. He's well aware of what my plans were from the beginning because um, that was also based on whether or not I wanted to take over this property to have to open Yaz's table Liability and do that. insurance didn't exactly. have a problem with it or anything. No, and they were well aware of they that as well. They would be the well. first one that you were putting people in danger. Correct. They had assessed the property. They had said that there was absolutely, you know, there was no question as far as um, not wanting to be able to have something like this outside. And you shared parking with... Uh, Sullivan Tire or stuff like that the entire property which is a good and bad thing but at least good in the sense that even if people are on a wait at the restaurant like on a Saturday or Sunday where there isn't parking they will be able to find parking 
in the back and all that is approved by the landlord he's the same landlord that owns the entire property so it was his rules saying that it was a shared um, parking lot amongst all the establishments that are on the property itself including the church that's right next door to me as well um, so that's part of these yellow lines are going to be picket fence like that will be the it. identical same material that i have currently in the um, existing fence what i will do is i'll extend it around the yellow uh, where you see the yellow border just just give you my my take on this i i'm personally against a white picket fence beautiful fence as it is to separate um, kids have an ice cream and alcohol. I mean, anybody can just hop the fence, climb over the fence. I, I just assumed um, for security reasons and for sound proofing reasons that it would be a regular tall fence. Unfortunately, I do agree with you on that sense. Um, however, unfortunately, because of the visibility of my building and the street view, that would actually be obstructed to people not being able to see the establishment driving by. I get it. And it just says the premises must be enclosed by a fence, rope, or other means to prevent access from a public walkway. Which I believe that this structure does follow under that guideline. It's better than the rope. Right. Yeah. <laughs> Which was part of the, one of the ideas, but then everything with the being aesthetically appeasing as well <laughs> in that sense. I'm not sure there's a public walkway there anyway, so. There's no sidewalk here. Ian, do you want this back? <coughs> no, that's okay. okay. Um, point taken by Ian uh, on the assessor's plot plan, there is no uh, patio. Uh, I don't know if that means anything to the town assessor, but uh, I'd like to make a note that the town assessor has been made aware of that. Definitely. Please and thank you. Uh, I mean, they can certainly go out, and they've done it before, to take pictures of, of any of the dwellings, so they, it's just not on here, but they can certainly do that. So. I don't know if it's on record or not. They may already know about it. I don't know, yeah. but it's point taken. But may I ask, what would that um, put me if that ended up being a situation? Um, probably the, the landowner would probably I think the landowner is in trouble, not you. Okay. The building owners in trouble, not you. Trouble, I mean, you're a renter. You're I don't think right. your taxes are going to go up. Your taxes, your taxes yeah. are going to change. Okay. So, <laughs> you might want to extend your lease now before. You I think so. <laughs> I'm showing up late to the party here, but uh, the hours. Have you guys talked about the hours? I guess. No, we're right just now. doing the outside seating right now. Oh, okay. And then we'll <laughs> okay. All right. Try to keep it. So we we did ask her to come back with some discussion on on the seating and the fence. Uh, she did do that. Uh, does anybody have any questions on any other part of the enclosure piece of this? Um, so we agreed to do this in, in two parts, if I believe. One was for the patio and then one was for the hours. So right. Is there a specific license she's looking at, a specific motion for the patio? Is it part of the entertainment, uh, Kenny, or is it all one thing? Or well, no, I'm just, I'm just for my own benefit. You know, the, the alcohol and then the live music. So there's an entertainment license, and then there's going to be the alcohol portion, correct? The alcohol portion would be the alteration of premise. Alteration of premise. Yep, and the okay. entertainment license would be separate. Mm -hmm. so do we want to uh, talk about the hours now? before we vote for the application for the entertainment? It's a little confusing because I know, it, as you want to say it at the last meeting, um, the restaurant's not really open at night, but you have functions at night, correct? Is that what I Correct. I, I had it where I'm allowed to keep the restaurant open until midnight every single day. Having that in my future plans, I may actually open for dinner. I may open for dinner for three nights a week and then have the rest of the uh, week for private events. I was just kind of having it where you know, I was still free to be able to figure out what I wanted to do and, and how to go about it. As far as the entertainment license goes, the, the application for the license that's in front of me still has Monday through Friday, 8 a.m. to midnight, and Saturday to Sunday, 8 a.m. to midnight. I'm not going to vote to approve that. Understanding, understood. 
Do we have a bylaw about how long, what time for live entertainment outside? Is outside? I don't, I, I'm not, I, I don't like the idea of midnight either, but I don't want to say something if there's a bylaw that protects you. I believe it's in our options to <coughs> set the policy for It would be your decision, operation. exactly. Yep. Now, on the common VIC license, it has different hours than are on the alcohol beverage license. Which ones are take precedent, or which I ones? I do are believe you're looking at cream, etc. as common VIC hours, not my current Yaz's table hours. That's also been a confusion with um, with a lot of the applications in going back in reference to what cream was and what I Yaz's table is. Both say Yaz's table on them, but. Yeah. So on my common Vic um, in front of you, what are the hours that you have? So one of them was dated January 10th, 2018, and one was January, uh, April 26th, 2018. April 26th would be um, after Yaz's table is opened. Actually, what does the new, there's a new one out now, right? The, the one that you, we show says till 10 p.m., but you, you for common Vic <coughs> hours of operation? That's the one that's here, but I think you had it midnight. midnight. Wasn't that the, the, I think that was the confusion. Right, I think that is the, where, um, Still to allow to be open until, until midnight. And then you, I know your common VIC says till 10 p.m. So I, I think that's what we need to get the hours ironed out. Mm -hmm. Now these, the, both these ones that I'm looking at expired in 2018, so there, there must be a new one with, do, do we have, can we look at the new one with? The, yeah, and it says, have, the common VIC says till 10. It, the new one says. And closed Mondays? Yes. Are you sure? And close. Let me check. <laughs> <'Cause it should. my new application submitted um, back in November when I had done all of that I did request making sure Monday through Sunday 8 a.m. till midnight at least for the hours of operations just to keep things um, mm -hmm. open and then understanding that the for the patio to some towns that I've worked in and opening restaurants they have different hours of operations as far as the end time for outsourced outdoor seating which is actually in my favor so people won't be just hanging out outside being able to bring them in possibly sending them home um, so we can close up so the, yeah the license that we had renewed was Monday closed Tuesday through Friday 7 a.m. to 10 p.m. Saturday through Sunday 7 a.m. to 10 p.m. that's what's current in effect that's for 2019 that, that was 2018 that was renewed for 2019 okay. uh, until some vote occurred here Okay, then um, just because Mondays shouldn't be closed, I think okay. the printed ones that I have state otherwise. That's okay. Confused. Okay. Mm -hmm. we, that we've got to clear on that up. So is it possible that she has a license that's something different than that? Unless I'm confused, but I have to check. Um, um, would ha I'm not sure what your license says. I'll have to check that when I get back yeah, to Yeah, so check that. Just to remind the board, but it, it appears that there is a, a difference possibly between what she has on the license given to her and what we have in front of us as far as hours of operation. And that clarification would be is that she believed that she was open on Mondays? Yes, uh, that I'm allowed to be open on Mondays. And um, we think that she should be closed on Mondays based on what we have for the common particular license in front of us. So. Uh, I would think that's a, a big point and um, given the fact that you're open Tuesday through Sunday 7 a.m. to 10 p.m. Um, I, I think we were talking about limiting the outside exposure to 9 p.m. if that's correct uh, Tim was that something we that was that was my recommendation as, as far as entertainment, entertainment but would I yeah. still be able to serve food outside until 10 p.m. given the um we're talking about entertainment Asian. license here, not the not okay. your food operations license. Your food operations is seven seven to ten. So, uh, I'm thinking about entertainment. We did limit the entertainment at um, Abington Ale House too. I mean, we did yeah, keep it, was it down twelve to eight. I twelve to eight, I believe. So, um, we did try to keep it to a minimum, uh, and they actually were the ones keeping it to a minimum, not mm -hmm. us, because they didn't feel they were going to have a lot. So, um, 
I'm Bob. I, I just got to ask. Go ahead. This is for an entertainment license. All right. <coughs> I don't say what I see proposed hours of operation, and I, I just went over this with Ken, and maybe I missed something, but it says 8 a.m. to midnight. That's what that's I. That's the operation. That's that's correct. That's that's the operation for it's the right. for the entertainment license not for the common vic license no it says proposed hours of operation for the that, for the entertainment license because it's okay. the entertainment license it states an entertainment license not the That's common vic license no i know i i, I, I agree see what I, it I, says I, it's so like so hour. there's a confusion on the board dory and, and rick mm -hmm. to understand that the town of abington application for entertainment license on on its form says proposed hours of operation is, is being understood as being the actual operation hours of the business, correct if I'm wrong? That's what I'm thinking. Okay, and my interpretation is that is for entertainment, entertainment. Yes. the hours of operation would be 8 a.m. to midnight unless R is yeah. appealed by us. Yes, an entertainment license is separate from a common victual license. So, so there, are two, there are two separate licenses required. So am I comfortable in telling Tom that we're actually voting tonight <laughs> for the entertainment <laughs> license and the hours of operation for entertainment? Just right. for entertainment, so yeah. They can, and so the they can, the band can perform two hours after they stop s serving booze. The way it's if the, if yeah. that's the way it was so voted we, tonight, I think yeah. We, I think we. Hmm. I think we they need just to have something proper to to vote on. I mean, if we want to get a sense of how the board feels, or if we have any sense, of, but if we want to have a sense on the on the outside area, yes, we'll probably be approved if. But I mean, it, we have we have so much information going against each other exactly I, I just like to know when the restaurant's going to be open when they want to when they they'd like to have entertainment and when the alcohol will be served well, we, if we continue this to the 28th of january our next meeting will that be enough time to get the paperwork in order so that all the hours match and then we could meet you can come in meet with me and let's iron everything out okay so we can just and please and a copy of what's on your wall to her to yeah. show the difference <laughs> yes yeah. absolutely definitely want to see that absolutely so if all in favor we'll keep this as an open meeting till our next meeting if that's okay with the board continue it another continuance until the 28th yep sure does she do I didn't. How do you feel about that? Did you, I mean, um, sure, of course I understand. Uh, we're just ironing out the times of everything at the moment. Is yeah. that correct? Yeah. Um, and you said the twenty eighth. Okay. There's a board of agreement that we'll put this off and leave it open till the twenty eighth. Yeah, and I'd recommend when you refill out the application for entertainment that you lower those hours from midnight. For until nine p.m. That would be my recommendation. I don't know how the rest of the board feels. So that would inquire another uh, reapplic reapplying for yeah. it. Re refilling out. I Dory yeah, we'll will take help care you of more so. Yeah. Okay. But um, is that just filling out an application, Dory? Yes. Yes. Yeah. So when you meet with her, you just fill out the application and an appeal. A pay, a change the hours from midnight to 9 p.m. Okay. Yeah, we'll and make sure everything's I'd on like the same. to work out. Uh, I, I actually, more importantly, is when, when we get back together again, I'd like to hear about the difference between her common particular license and yeah. our common particular license. And just to establish that we're we're going to continue this until then. Okay. All right. And, yeah. Everyone's in agreement? I agree. Hmm? Make a motion oh. to continue until the 28th. Motion to continue to the 28th. Do I have a second? I'll second. Second. Any further comment? All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed, no. 5 0 0. We'll see you on the 28th. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you to the board. Um, I, I'd also like to point out in our audience tonight, uh, our newly elected representative, Allison Sullivan, is in the audience. I'd like to come up and just say hello. Open meeting violation. <laughs> <laughs> I don't want to violate any rules now. Good evening. Good evening, gentlemen. Hello, and hello to everyone in the audience. Um, Allison Sullivan, uh, I just want to come and say hi. I wanted to come to the meeting to hear what's going on in the town of Abington. We have bill filing deadlines uh, Friday, so I wanted to come discuss with the board after meetings uh, if anything that needs to be proposed on my behalf on the state level. Uh, let you all know that my eyes and ears are open. My door is always open. Um, my website is up and uh, not my website. My email is up to, up and active. So it's Allison Sullivan at mass ma house gov. 
um, I won't give you my office phone line because we're going to be changing locations and that number will no longer be existent. I will give you guys all my um, my cell phone number. I know some of you already have it. Um, we'll do it through the board. I mean, for the town manager. You don't want to publicly announce that. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. So I'll I'll make sure that we get that all through. But um, my uh, legislative aide is also Jason Ross. So it's Jason dot Ross R O S S at um, mahouse.gov. So please feel free to reach out if I can be assistance in any way. Okay. Thank you. Anything? So questions? Your email is Allison dot Sullivan dot ma dot house dot gov. No, Allison dot Sullivan at mahouse dot gov. Allison dot Sullivan at <laughs> mahouse dot gov. So that's deal. It's on the website. It is on the state <laughs> website. <laughs> So Jim, if I'm not getting your emails, it's because you're in, in you know, putting it in wrong. <laughs> yeah, um, it is on the website. So if you if you just Google it, um, it should be on the, the house website. All right, I'll venture. What's the website? <laughs> it's just yeah, it's just for the House of Reps. So you can just yeah, search it that way. It will show you. I have no office right now. It's the bullpen. We're in the basement. But feel free to come by and, and come say hi. I, I in the bowels of the basement. Yeah, I share the Not office basement. with you know I think ten other representatives so it's not bad um, but I'd be happy to answer any questions if you have any anyone have any questions no again congratulations thank you welcome to the uh, public domain and thank you for your service thank you thank you, thank you. Uh, next on our agenda is the approval of December 18th 2018 open open and executive session minutes I'll take a motion when ready Those motion is made to approve the minutes. Do I have a second? I'll second. Motion and second. Anything further to be said? If not, all in favor say aye. 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 One abstention. Executive session. I'll take a motion when ready. What's the term we use in hold until? All matters are resolved. Not to be released until all matters are resolved. I'll make that motion to approve. Motion to approve unless until all matters are resolved. Mm -hmm. yeah. I have a second. <laughs> I'll second. Anything further to be said? If not all in favor say aye. Aye. That's one. I yeah. Opposed? Is it unanimous? Well, almost unanimous. No, I abstain. <laughs> I'm sorry, 401. Thank you very much. Um, appointment to the Treasurer Tax uh, Collectors List as this title custodian, Mr. Chairman. I mean, uh, Mr. Tom, manager. Uh, yes, Mr. Chairman. This is a requirement for the uh, uh, tax title custodian to pursue the. Uh, um, tax title properties as well as uh, any surplus properties to dispose of on behalf of the town. Um, the treasurer collector has historically been in that position. However, uh, it's been many, many years since there's been an appointment of such, and it is recommended that uh, going forward there be a tax title custodian by position named by the board. This is replacing the existing title? Um, I'm sorry. This replace the existing title. That no, it's not the title. It's a, it's a certain function that the treasurer <coughs> collector would be <coughs> entitled would we, would be able to perform on behalf of the town as te as the tax title custodian. Uh, is there any requirement that to, to, are all requirements met to meet to, to appoint this title? Uh, yes, yes. It's it's just simply uh, designating a, a position to act in this capacity. Any questions from the board? No. Well, I'll take a motion to approve the uh, town manager's request to um, appoint the treasurer collector as the tax title custodian. I'll make that motion to appoint the 
treasurer collector as a tax title custodian. Do I have a second? No second. Jim seconds. Any further to be said? If not, all in favor say aye. 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 Opposed, no. That's unanimous. Thank you very much, gentlemen. One, one uh, more point there, Mr. Chairman. Also, in uh, if you look at my memo on the subject, uh, the treasurer collector has informed us that the town does have a, a, a dated bylaw with regard to tax possession, tax taking, and that uh, she would proceed a with her in, along the lines stated in the state statute, which, uh, again, the bylaw, the old bylaw, is, in, is not consistent with. So that's just more of a informational for you. Thank you very much. Uh, the next concern um, up is the discussed and final determination of voting location for the next vote coming up, which I believe you said was April 27th? That's correct. Um, so the local election, yes. The, the local election. Um, the question becomes is do we keep it at the current location at the high school or do we move it somewhere else? I've had uh, discussions with the um, town clerk and she says the cost is equally between us moving it from the high school to a the hall, possibly the Emerald Hall, like we had it before for the town election. Um, the cost is, I guess, is pretty much equal no matter where we hold it. The question becomes is the convenience for the voters of the town to come out and vote. Um, I personally heard enough um, from the last election that we had of the complications and situations we had with people voting in the town hall. I know all the members uh, have different points of view, but I did want to give the town clerk uh, full notice ahead of time of where we thought we should hold the the meeting, uh, I hold the vote for the town in, in April. So um, I wanted to give everyone on the board, um, and I'd like to get this determined if possible tonight, that we either keep it where it is or we move it to a new location to make sure it's convenient for everyone in the town to vote. Mr. Coyle. Does the town clerk or the town manager have a recommendation? Well, the town clerk has uh, given, has passed along her recommendation to be one that the, uh, that the uh, election coming up, the, the, uh, the town election, uh, would not be an issue because it's on a Saturday, but going beyond that with the major elections, presidential, primary and election, that uh, she doesn't believe that the, the high school is an appropriate facility for several reasons. Number one, the traffic flow, uh, getting people in and out of the, not just the facility, uh, the parking, but the building. And so based upon that, and I know, I know Peter Schaefer has given his input to the extent that uh, they that would require them closing the building on two occasions uh, during the presidential election process uh, and again that's just for your information but obviously the school department is not would not be pleased with that but obviously they'll do what they have to do so like i said the town clerk prefers that the election uh, location going forward after the town election uh, in april be moved to the emerald hall if you're looking for a permanent location that's uh, not likely to change for the foreseeable future, that's what the town clerk recommends. So the, em the Emerald Hall doesn't charge at all to use the hallway during during election. It's it's minimal. I'm not exactly sure how much, but the town clerk has told us that it's minimal cost. So if we canceled school, they would have no objection. All their objections is the traffic because of the school. So let's say let, let's say yeah. they they cancel school, and I know I we can't cancel school, but. If they cancel school, the high school would still be ideal. No, it wouldn't be ideal, according to uh, the town clerk. The ideal situation, because you still have staff there, you have uh, you have other people in the building. It's not like the, the building would be completely cleaned out. Um, one of the on Saturday, one right? of the concerns. No, I'm not. I'm talking about during the week for uh, like presidential primary and presidential election. Saturday's not an issue. It's Why? When the because there's no school. Because, yeah, one of the concerns that uh, the superintendent has is, is, you know, there's only many, so many school days they have to be open for, and if you have a, a tip, if a difficult winter could put them up against it in terms of school days. Uh, so that that's one one issue. If they don't if they don't close school to try to uh, you know make sure they try to get the days in so they're not going into June, um, having an election there with you know when it's not closed to students is that's just not that's just not going to work between the number of students yeah parents, students and the election staff, that didn't work yeah i think we all agree on that yeah i, th I thought we th we said that we're not going that's not going to come into play until not even next year the year after it's going to be yeah it's, it, yeah this coming town election in april that's not going to be an issue because it's be on 2020 a before it's but it's going beyond that point if you're looking for a permanent 
permanent location. So <laughs> well, you can take this one election at a time. There's I'll make a motion that we take that we uh, April voting take place at the high school. I, I'm sorry, the joint middle school, high school, yeah. pre-K, right. whatever right. you want to call it, right. the expensive right. building. <laughs> for the town election. The town election. Mm -hmm. I'll second that motion. Motion and second. Is there anything for to be said? If not, all in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? It's unanimous. High school will be it. What I would like to do is after the town election, revisit this issue, see if it goes smoother this election. Uh, I, I, I think after they get a couple elections out of the belt, people will realize the bargain situation and uh, they can open it up. The, the, the presidential election was tough because, uh, or the primary was tough because the, the, the school was open. You could only go in one door. But I think if they come get a system where most people can park out front and go, go through, and, they, and people with uh, disabilities can go around the back parking area, I think we can get it to run as smooth as we can. Yeah. It's not going to be perfect, but. And I, because one of the things we do is allow public comment, I'd certainly like to hear the public's comment on, on where they would like to vote, whether they want to do it at the Emerald Hall or at the uh, new high school, preschool, middle school. I think someone has a public comment already. You had to say it, didn't you? I did. I did. Yes, Ann. I just want to make one comment about the, um, the elections that were right around the summer months. There's no air conditioning in that building. So what in the what work... In what building? The high school. Okay. So what the workers went through being confined to that gymnasium all day long with no air conditioning, it, you, can, you can ask Leanne, I don't know what, what you folks recall, but Leanne had these big fans up there. I mean, I was afraid people were going to pass out. It was that I, bad in that building. And I, and I think the air conditioning situation, although I'm not on the school building committee anymore, but I think that situation has been addressed and been taken care of. I mean, this is a brand new school that probably shouldn't have had that problem, and I believe they've already worked on that. I don't know that as a fact, Rick. There's I don't no, know there's no air conditioning. There's no say in, there. in that. I'm sorry? There's no air conditioning in that, uh, in that part of the building, if that's what you're asking. Oh, in that part of the building. So it was very uncomfortable. I mean, people that would have, you know, I know that we got the turnout that we wanted, but I think that people would think twice about going there if it was a really hot day again and having to stand in line in those conditions. I also remember issues just my comment. Lighting. It was really it was bad terrible. lighting issues yeah. there too. But and parking. Yeah. Parking was tough. It took me 20 minutes to back out. Kevin. Just give me your name and address. Kevin DiMazio, 29 Orange Street. Uh, this past presidential election, I did help out um, guiding people. So that I think the biggest complaint I heard was people had to park, limited parking, and they had to walk halfway around the back of the school. It was a different entrance than we had from the town election. So I know a lot of people were saying they thought it was at Emerald Hall, they had to went there. They, there was a lot of back and forth. Uh, Leanne did a good job of putting it out there, putting maps, guiding people. But we've had two elections there, two different days of the week, two different entrances. Um, no no air conditioning and it also it does interfere with school so in my eyes emerald hall was a perfect place for it is a separate entrance and exit one way one way um plenty of parking no, emerald I hall I don't, I don't agree with that emerald hall is a local local business i mean they're in town if they're extending the olive branch so to speak i think it would be beneficial for the town to at least moving forward i mean People just don't know which entrance, where it is, set in one place, moving forward. They know where it is. They know where they're going to be going to vote. There's no confusion. They don't have to worry about it. Different maps every single time go from there. But there was a ton of complaints about that. Right, but I, I think one of the things, too, that the people voted on when they built a brand new school is part of it with town meetings and, and elections. Um, you know, we're, we're going to be held there. And it, as I said, I, I don't mind, but I'd rather including you, uh, you know, hear pu public comment on it myself. So. No, I, I agree with Kevin. Oh, it was confusing because one time you go in this door, the next time you go into the other door, it's just, I mean, if, that's why I said let's, let's work it out this one and see how it goes better. And it, they should have the same entrance, the same floor plan e for every single election, whether it's here or whether it's in Emerald Hall. And I understand yeah. you guys have plenty of time before the, the next election that will be held there, but yeah. you're putting it now, you know, it would have to go into the school committee, you know, superintendent to 
whether cancel school, close school, now you're affecting, we have a bad winter, they miss a ton of school, now we're going to give them an extra day. Yeah, but I'm not, that was only one selectman's comment about having it at the school and, and canceling school for a day. I'd be opposed to that to myself. Yeah. Um, but, um, you know, again, things that we have to work out. Thank you. Thank you. Any other comment on this? No? Um, open and special annual town meeting warrants. Mr. Town Manager. Oh, yeah. Um, if you could uh, tonight open the special and annual town meeting warrants. Um, probably prefer to leave it open, and you would close the warrants probably at your April 22nd meeting. But for tonight, just to open the special and, and annual town meeting warrants, and we're looking to hold town meeting on Monday, May 20th, which is convenient for the town clerk, the town moderator, and the school administration. And that's the same week that we've had for the past few years. Close when, Dory, did you say? Probably close at April 22nd, but we kind of like to leave that open just in case that changes. And then May 20th will be the town meeting? Yes. Uh, request for motion to open the special and annual town meeting warrants. And to close it on April 22nd? And you can do that. Currently sure. close it on April 22nd? Yeah, you can always reopen. That's fine. Do we have to vote on a closed date now? You don't have to. No. Yeah, because maybe we would want to not set that in stone if, in case uh, we're going to No, in the past, on something. I'm sorry, the uh, board would, uh, if necessary, vote to extend it. Oh, you could have voted? Yeah, yes. Just All right, as long as that's an option, that's fine. On it, yeah. All right, so do I have a motion to open that's the special? That's my motion. I mean, I'll second this motion. Motion and second. Anything further to say? All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Unanimous. All right. Town manager report, sir. Yes, Mr. Chairman. I'm, I'm sorry. Oh, oh yes. Just there's say actually there's over. one item, number two, on the action item having to do with the uh, minutes of, I think you missed that. The amended October 29th open yes. session minutes. Oh, you're right. I thought we did. Item number two. We did the December 18th in the executive session, but. I apologize. I think we did. Yeah. Miss Before we go to that, then I'll go back up to the approval of the amended October 29th, 2018 open session minutes that we were asked to relook at again. My apologies. Thank you very much for pointing that out. You have page one to that. I have three page twos to the October 29th. If anybody has a page one, I'll just quickly read it. <laughs> But, you know, page two was the only part oh, the that was that was amended. Yeah. Oh, okay. Yes. Well, then I guess I don't need a page one. I'll take a motion to approve the amended October 29, 2018 open session minutes. I'll make that motion to approve those minutes. Motion to approve those minutes. Do I have a second? I'll second. Two seconds. Anything further to be said? If not, all in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed? Unanimous five zero. Thank you very much. Town manager report, please. Yes, Mr. Chairman. Uh, number one, the Memorial Bridge. Uh, you, you may recall a couple. Of, uh, <coughs> actually, a year ago's town meeting, the uh, the town approved funding uh, from the Community Preservation Act to do a structural analysis of that bridge. Um, we have just uh, opened the bids. Actually, we only got one one bidder uh, who met technical specifications. And we're currently waiting for the uh, financial proposal um, and to determine if we have available funding. Second item is uh, as pursuant to the Green Community Grant of $146,000 that we received, the uh, work to update the HVA systems in both the library and the town hall will be beginning this February. The um, that was, uh, as you can see, a, a lot of effort coordinating a lot of different agencies internally and externally. Um, the other part of this is that last year's town meeting and the capital plan, the, the town did appropriate in excess of $100,000 uh, to accomplish this function. So this is uh, this will allow us to reappropriate those funds for another another purpose. So does this mean you're finally going to cash that check that's been on the floor since December? That's the one. That's the one. <laughs> <laughs> Got to dust it off though first. Right. Got to dust it off. So the uh, electrical aggregation plan that uh, that we engaged in uh, two years ago, um, as that's if you recall, that was a uh, 14 communities, everything being one of them. 
uh, that would that was bidding separately um, for elect electrical um, rates uh, to essentially compete against the end grid standard rate. And attached to this, you'll see some information documenting that over that uh, period of time, that the residents and businesses of the town saved over about $1.1 million. Again, that's not the government, those are individual uh, uh, property owners throughout town. We did not um, engage in that program for this last quarter because the bid rates were so similar to the national grid standard rate, it wasn't um, just it wasn't effective to do that. At some point uh, in the next several months, uh, we'll probably be asking you to uh, approve um, once again entering into uh, the ag aggregation plan to accept bids and see uh, um, to essentially continue the success we've had to date. If we do do it again, that means everybody gets the postcard again or the letter and gets confused again, right? Yes, that's what happens. All right. <laughs> I think it's worth it. Obviously, we saved right. the residents again, a lot of money, but it is confusing. And it is confusing. We're not trying to work anybody, but it's confusing to the extent that you really you don't have to do anything. Right. You're, you're automatically a part of it, as and unless you are. You're automatically going to save money. Correct. And I like the fact that the town didn't participate in it because they weren't. We weren't going to save the residents money right, the last right. quarter. So. Exactly. Um, number four, the Strawberry Valley Golf Course. Um, and uh, you may have had a supplemental uh, uh, memo to this on Saturday morning the, the Strawberry Valley Co Golf Course Committee did vote to um, go from a contracted service to bringing this function in house and as I point out here there will be some staffing requirements um, as well as um, some logistics in terms of how we deal with the finances and uh, again some of the soft costs of this program but Based upon the analysis of the Strawberry, Strawberry Valley Golf Course Committee and what we've looked at internally, um, it would seem to, it, it, the savings or the benefit to the town would be approximately $200,000 uh, annually. Right now, all the, the town merely receives $4,000 a month from, the, from Com Golf, who is the, the, the company that currently is the management firm for the golf course. Got every month, Rick? Uh, four thousand a month is, is what we get from the contractor. Yes. Every month. Yes. Yes. Um, Forty-eight thousand. Yeah. So as you can see, there's a significant uh, benefit, and again, two hundred thousand dollars is after the costs that have been considered. This isn't uh, you don't you don't deduct the expenses from this two hundred thousand dollar estimate. So as I said, uh, dealing with the logistics, particularly as we head towards the end of a fiscal year. Um, the timetable with the golf course committee having to figure out how to run a golf course isn't consistent with our fiscal year, so we, we do have some uh, some logistics to work out. Is there any, are there any uh, liability issues for the town that weren't there that will be uh, added? Yes, the the town will have uh, will be under the town's insurance umbrella, and that is one of the the costs that would be paid for, also um, or, or recouped from the the enterprise fund. Now, w people. Uh, are going to be hired to do this, I yes. assume. Yes. Well, they will be considered town employees? That's correct. Okay. And this 200000 is including their costs? In, in that, is, so. that is the, uh, the, the financial benefit after those cost uh, personnel um, expenses and other soft costs uh, that uh, pertain to personnel. There's only going to be um, one uh, full-time, uh, two full-time individuals up there, the superintendent, um, and the rest will be only either seasonal full-time or, um, or part-time. So the, there won't be other benefits that are attributable to any, anybody but one and maybe two positions. There'll be some, you know, there'll be some deductions and there'll be workers' comp assessments, but those aren't, those aren't so significant. And those startup costs, like buying all the equipment and stuff, does, that's the enterprise fund that's going to come out? That's correct. And, and There's enough to cover all right. that. Right. And the golf course is, uh, is proposing, and it makes no sense to do otherwise, to purchase the existing equipment from Com Golf, who um, is essentially going out of business. So they've <coughs> got some estimates on, on how much that's going to cost them to purchase the existing so equipment. So we'd own that equipment outright? That's correct. And then, so next year, that 200000 might be three hundred. Oh, we may have to yeah, I think I think we'll have to see how that first year goes. Yeah, uh, one of the uh, the issues is obviously golf carts. And they 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 know they're looking at different options. You know, uh, lease purchases rather than outright or buying used equipment. 
uh, used golf carts as an example from um, some higher end golf courses that turn their golf carts over uh, on a fairly regular basis. So those are some of the um, uh, factors they're looking at at the moment. So this is going to, I think, over the first year kind of play itself out a little bit. Um, no pun intended. So you're anticipating this golf season or this year or, or now it's it, they've taken it over? Y yes, yes, because mm -hmm. you know that either that or they'd have to you know uh, contract again with, and, and that's just not feasible because no, no firm is going to um, provide the infrastructure investment for such a short maybe a one year period. Um, as they mentioned I think before the golf course committee had been looking at this for maybe next year. But the contract they had with Com Golf, because of the procurement requirements, it was a three-year contract. It had already been extended to the extent allowed by by law. So it was a move that really had to be made now rather than in the future. And this will be no burden on the DPW. They will, they will not be involved in. No, nope. no. This will be okay. a separate enterprise fund with its own separate expenses, etc. Yes. And reporting to you. Well, through the <coughs> golf course committee, uh, that would be the, if you want to call that the immediate supervisor department, it would be the golf course committee. And they're hiring everybody? Well, technically, the hiring is at the, is at the level of town manager, but obviously with the recommendation of the, of okay. the golf course committee. At some point, I, I, mean, I don't want to put extra burden on this committee because they're obviously taking on a lot more than they know we would, but we'd like to get them in and ask, you know, pepper them with some questions. I'm sure. sure have a lot of yep. questions, especially as it starts getting into golf season, so maybe before. spring. There yeah, maybe yeah. It's spring when it yeah, starts to certainly. March would be good, I think. Yeah. And two two last items. Uh, one, the uh, the Excedra Monument out here, some of them known as the Revolutionary War Monument at the uh, at the Circle at Town Hall. Um, we just did get an additional insurance recovery um, of about $8,000. So at this point, the only difference between what the town um, had initially appropriated, uh, well, appropriated town meeting pending insurance recovery uh, and the actual recovery itself is about $7,000. And those are costs that we may still recover from the, uh, the party who was you know, guilty of the offense. Uh, one last thing, we conducted the procurement for the easement. <coughs> By, down by the Council on Aging uh, that was approved by town meeting. Um, the limitations on this easement had previously been set by the Board of Selectmen to be for our utilities and emergency access. Um, we only got one response and it did not meet the technical and the financial requirements um, set forth in the RFP and as had been approved by the Board of Selectmen. So as of now, uh, there, there's no, uh, I will say, there's nothing proceeding right now with regard to um, um, leasing that easement. Uh, that doesn't mean in the future um, this won't come up again with a sp specific request. If that happens, this is a lease of real property, so that would be something we'd have to talk to the board about and mo most likely an executive session. So that's all I have, Mr. Chairman. Thank you. Do the board members have anything? I have a couple things that we could maybe work on for our next meeting. Um, we didn't discuss the budget at all, and obviously it's become it's budget season. Are we, um, how far along is that process, and uh, can we get some data as soon as it's available? Yes, sir. Yes. yes. Okay. How far along is the process? I, I know you've, you've had several meetings. And well, we've had our internal meetings with department heads. Uh, we've uh, forwarded a... a uh, let's say a primary budget to the selectmen and the finance committee uh, it's it's not pretty at this stage it's a uh, we've got about a 1.3 million dollar gap that we need to deal with that's before we know what state aid increases we might be seeing that's before we have a better estimate on new growth uh, but those factors aren't going to you know close close that gap some of the item the issues that uh, that um, that are making this a little tougher than usual the ambulance fund has been running in deficit the last couple of years, and we, the Department of uh, the uh, Revenue, is requiring, well, suggesting but effectively requiring that 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 enterprise fund be closed out and that the rev that the operation be brought in house 
that's going to cost us about three hundred thousand dollars next year because they just uh, that's that's how far behind the ambulance receipts are uh, are running versus the operation one of the other factors is that um, this year you all know about the cost of to some extent the cost of recycling and that's pushing the uh, the amount about two hundred thousand dollars above the um, the overrides that have been uh, voted to support that service for um, two two overrides over the past uh, in years past so that's a significant issue and likely going to become more of a factor so how the town wishes to maybe deal with that becomes a, a policy issue uh, but as of right now those are some gaps we have to fill well that's just an, an example of some of the issues we're dealing with that are uh, rather unique this year and we received our free cash now which was yes very, about very 1.4 again. million in free cash yes that's pretty cons pretty consistent as of late every yes. year it's very good uh, how's the um i wait for the next meeting but the report just you know, on the health insurance the health insurance we, we are for right now we had we had an initial plug of about eight percent we're now looking at uh, that trend dropping to about six percent and we have follow-up meetings with our with our underwriters we expect that's going to continue to drop as we head towards uh, towards town meeting uh, from an actual uh, from an underwriting standpoint you know they use estimates to project ahead and every month that you can fill actual data versus a projection uh, our uh, rate seems to be less and less which isn't unusual but uh, to the extent that we're looking at about a, uh, a six percent plug at the moment that's that's pretty healthy but every one percent health insurance is, is about sixty thousand dollars okay any other questions we're still i'm sorry we're ahead. still uh, on our own we haven't joined any group or anything that's correct we're self-insured yes correct are we investigating that Yes, we had some uh, opportunities last year, but the un the um, the underwriting on some of the uh, partners who would like to who we spoke to weren't particularly good at the time. Good match. So they weren't they weren't good uh, good partners. A couple of things. Yes, okay. Um, street list. I know there's a list floating around of what streets are going to be hopefully used for, to be repaired you know the next oh. year is like numbered one through five mm -hmm. um, it's a little confusing and can we just update it and make make it clear so people know um, we'll have an idea I know it depends on what, what you get for chapter three uh, be money but I mean there's a plan in place for the streets and it, it would be nice if people ask if they could say we could tell them you look at this list and if you're number one that's hopefully this year number two is that or is, vice versa or five is it's a little confusing so maybe we can update that I don't think it's been updated for a little while um, North school were we going to talk about that this meeting or what was our plan on that do we know uh, I believe we're I, 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 maybe I'm wrong but I thought we we're going to wait for the town meeting and the fire chief's uh, presentation to the to the town meeting um, unless the board has other wishes um, to talk about I thought I thought after the uh, uh, chief's presentation the anticipation was he was going to bring a presentation to the town and the town meeting uh, and I thought we we're going to put it on the warrant to see if they were the town was interested in moving forward with possibly um, making some decisions on selling one of the schools and or, or having one school sold to get the other two schools taken down or whatever but uh, does the board have a, a other other discussion that they'd like to have between now and April well even if that's the case it's still that other school that I think the board should decide what to do with that other school. If, if the you no know, school is still up in the air, I mean, I use it for a new, possible new fire station. But the other school really didn't. I mean, what was the final recommendation? It was up to us, right? Yep. So, I mean, we should put that on the agenda for an upcoming meeting and make a decision. Or? Does the board wish to do that? That's fine with me. It's another fine winter. Yeah. It's just another winter where it's sitting there vacant. And all right, we have. I think we have to pay for a little bit of heat to get keep it running. So we might as well. Would you like to discuss that on the twenty eighth? That soon enough? That's fine. Okay. Can we put that on the agenda for yep. the schools, please? Um, anything else, Ken? Uh, surplus land. We talked about uh, Brock. Are you going to follow Brockton's plan, maybe, and um, have auction auction off some surplus land, or are you looking? Yes, okay? that's what uh, the uh, treasurer collector is working on, which which is one of the reasons why the town needed a tax title custodian. 
Okay. Could you uh, just on the next town manager's meeting just maybe update us on where he is on that, please? And I guess the last thing that I have is um, one of the hottest things being a selectman and the most complaints are about speeding on your street and intersections, dangerous intersections. Um, you know, I think we pushed to get the Route 18, the, the light, the left-hand turn. I know that was a fiasco for the first couple of days, but I haven't heard anything I about that, so I guess it's working better, that light. But yeah, I mean, there's right. intersections in town. Um, when I first got on, I really pushed for that intersection, uh, Washington and Adams, so the fork in the road where the park is. To get, I mean, that, there's a, that's a problem, and I think there's got to there's a redesign of that coming up. I think we talked about that, but I there's mean, one in Groveland and um, Linwood, Linwood that we've that's heard the, complaints that's the big about. One. So, and, and we actually, when I first got on the board, um, there were complaints about excessive speeding from that intersection down to the Brockton line. You know, and there was a bump there, and a lot of people complained about it. I just don't know what we can do other than ask old colony planning council to investigate that intersection possibly uh, it's just blinking lights now i think is it blinking yellow um grove and linwood there is no there is no light oh, there's, right there's two so stop signs right, 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 right now yeah um and i can give an update here that's a tough thing to say there, there, there's a lot of and if you if, once you mention one people are going to be oh this intersection right. right yeah and, and it's but the nature of the, I mean, I, I had to drive down to um, Atlanta this weekend, and I just couldn't believe how many people just not paying attention and, and driving out of lanes. It, it's texting and speeding, and it's just a combination of things. I'm not blaming, but there's bad intersections in town, but I'm just saying bad drivers contribute a lot. To Welcome to that. my world. I do it every day. Yeah, exactly. So. But um, no, actually, as far as that intersection goes, um, John Stone emailed, emailed me tonight because I had uh, emailed him on Saturday, and he when um, one of the a few of the residents had emailed me asking me to look into it and he did notice that there is a um the intersection is dim like the resident said uh he's calling national grid first thing tomorrow to have that bulb replaced so that should um help out with the lighting they cut some brush back um today and they um let's see he um oh he's getting permission from a res another resident on groveland street to cut some of their uh their tree back that's on t that's uh, coming close to town property, and he ordered today. He ordered two dangerous intersection signs ahead to put them from that hill. So when you're coming from Brockton, you can't see the intersection. No. So um, all the credit to John Stone that's for his oh, quick response. Yeah, he's great guy. yeah and, and not just John Stone, but we were talking about that on Facebook on Friday night. On Saturday morning, the chief contacted me and said, "Oh, I happen to see that in." Uh, Decided that with that day shift, more patrols up in that area. But what I would encourage so both people, department yeah, heads, absolutely. great job. I would encourage people, uh, they're speeding it all over town. But if you think that your area is really bad or the intersection is bad, just contact one of us and we will do our best. We're not miracle workers, but we'll try. I mean, just what Tim Shea is saying right now is just amazing that just a phone call to our DPW, at least we're going to. Get a oh, work yeah, an email on a Saturday, yeah. and, and he responded yeah. right away and took care of so, it. And the same with Chief Majenski. We don't want we don't want people to think that they're being ignored. We we, we try. We care about this. Certainly time, not. So. Um, just two on the um. Sorry. Um, do we get a report on the landfill or uh, the recap or uh, you know, capping it or uh, how in that's in going? That case, or? No news is good news. Mm -hmm. No, it's it's being monitored sure. on a monthly basis, and hopefully it will never have to be capped. That's the. Uh, that's that's the goal is to that as long as the continued yeah. Yeah. monitoring is within uh, um, acceptable levels by DEP uh, the town hopefully won't have to cap the uncapped piece that, that was already capped one time well not part of it well it, when we had coffee when we had coffee with the selectmen uh, yeah. one of the uh, residents come up and asked and I told them I would bring it forward so. yeah. we had, um, what I do three or four plants brought in front of the Conservation Commission many, many years ago about that, and it ran up to $4 million to yeah. the different plans they had. That's why we say no news is good news. Can you put that in this year's budget, $4 million for that? Yeah, yeah we got it covered, yeah. No, right, right, after, right after we change all the intersections in town. Uh, the 18 and 139 <laughs> intersection thing, yeah. I was on my I way to about that. Florida Drive and the phone lit up for some reason. Let somebody I talked to the state that before that. when I was in West Virginia. And they went out and tested it and timed it and said it's doing what it's supposed to do. And I 
put the word out on Facebook. This is what they did, and I think the quiet. I think the first. I think the first day. Yeah, yeah. yeah. the first few hours it looked crazy. In the first couple of days were confusing yeah. because they had a flashing yellow, and but it, I, I, I think it's much improved right now. It, it was slow too. The guy told me it was it's a three second green, and then it's a free for all. <laughs> yeah, two cars through, you know. Anything else, board? If not, I'll take a motion. Mm -hmm. Motion to adjourn. Motion to adjourn. Do I have a second? I'll second it. I did. Oh, yeah, oh Jim did. did it. I'm sorry, I didn't hear it. My apologies. Jeez. All in favor? Any further discussion? All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Thank you very much, gentlemen.